There was. <clears throat> I'll start off today. There was a New York City skyscraper that could have blown over. No, there's not. There is. Really? Um, there's an article from Slate.com. If you want to bring that up, yeah. I think there's a picture of it as well, which is cool. It's still there today. Oh, I've seen that one. It's uh, right. Yeah, it's a yeah. cool looking building. It's a good looking um, building. Oh, we should talk about. There's a building in New York which has no windows. Just a big skyscraper like building with no windows. Really? We'll talk about. I'm going to make a note to talk about that window. That's a bit it's creepy. about that window. Just Rather writing creepy. window. Uh, I'll talk about that in the future. Um, so this is still here today. When it was built. It was the seventh tallest building in the world. So, you know, serious architects behind this thing. As you can see in that picture, it's sort of on stilts, right? Mm. So this is a mega oh, yeah. building. Yep. And basically what we're looking at for our audio listeners is it's a picture of a, like a regular tall building, except at the bottom, it, instead of like having a lobby and stuff, it just has four or five, maybe, maybe four or something, like a bunch of stilts holding it up. I'm not even sure I'd call them stilts. They're more like feet. Mm. Yeah. I like don't know. I'm sure that's not the correct architectural term, stilts, but here we are. Uh, and basically the reason that they had to do this was to avoid putting it on the grounds because there was some church or something back in the day and they wanted to build there and they were like, the church guy was like, yeah, you can build as long as you don't go on my land. And so they built right above him, essentially, <laughs> which I thought was pretty clever. That's great. Um, I Although... You're building a skyscraper. Just give him some money. I mean, how much does a skyscraper cost? I will buy your church three times. Um, Now, the problem was because of that church, they couldn't build the stilts in the corner. Like, uh, we should say, uh, for audio listeners, if you're looking, it's like the corners don't, not like naturally, when you put something on stilts, you put the stilts in the corners. Sturdy corners, yeah. But these ones are not. They're in the middle of each side because that was just how it architecturally needed to be done. Now, this made it a little bit unstable. So they put this giant weight. I don't really know how engineering works. But somehow, to stop it like falling over or swaying and stuff. like massive foundations or something like that. No, well, they put uh, put, like a counterweight in. Was it a pint of gold? No, it should have been made in gold. <laughs> then it would have to be much smaller for those listeners who are... Uh, a teaspoon of neutron star. Yeah, te- uh, dude, like a pinprick of neutron star. <laughs> and it would have probably just destroyed the whole of New York. <laughs> um, if you're wondering what on earth we're going on about, listen to the last episode. Um, so apparently you drew this, the design originally on a napkin. You just scroll past it, go up. Oh, sorry. See, it says, just and go down. And, yeah. It says, structural engineers... William Le Messier's napkin ste- sketch of 601 Lexington. And I'm like, that's your napkin sketch? That's a rather... And then you, like, drew as if... Uh, you drew a perfect printed text onto the bottom of it. And I'm like, <laughs> look, Slate, I don't think you labelled yeah, that image correctly, I think correctly, you got that wrong. You? That, that, that yeah. is definitely from the patent office. That's <laughs> it does exactly look like a patent office that's submission. A patent office thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it says courtesy it says of David figure one <laughs> yeah. it's a corp sensor and then it's got one <laughs> yeah like a superscript number indicating that there's more at the bottom of the nap- napkin uh, either way it's an impressive napkin sketch and so they add this big weight inside it to uh, to stop it swaying in the wind but then one day uh, a long time later the architect gets a phone call from an undergrad architect student some guy who's just studying a girl who's just studying at university and says to him I reckon this building is going to fall over. Um, are you all right? What's going on? Hang on. Yep, I'm good. Sorry. Yeah. So I was just giving me a little bit of a sound check there. I still hear that buzzing going on in the background. I'm pretty sure it's just in our headphones. But oh, the- I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of pisses me sure off. We can edit it out. It's yeah. Fine. Well, at least we know. <laughs> That's an that was, error. That was a bit of lazy tongue, though, I'm sure. You know. yeah. I'm sure we can edit it out. Well, it's that, just that. I don't know. The ballerina wore buttless chaps. <laughs> the butt mitzvah. <laughs> Bar the rain in Spain falls mostly on the plain. Um, Sorry, back back to architecture. So this undergrad phones him up and he's like, uh, she's saying, I think this building's going to fall over because if the wind's hitting the corners. Now, on a normal building, they don't check this. Mm. I mean, maybe they do now. I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Since this the case. Slate article, <laughs> it wasn't written for like super architects. I'm not an architect. I'm not an engineer. I'm not going to pretend to be. But essentially, there's something weird about it where like, normally if it hits if you've got a building right they'll test like how much wind smashing into the big obvious side of it would knock it over yeah and then they make it so that can't happen they already test the corners yeah. but they don't test the corners and apparently this undergrad student was like i reckon because this building's so weird if it hits if winds over a certain amount hit the corners we're gonna have some real trouble with this and they were saying okay winds only every 50 years or so but every 50 this is a skyscraper <laughs> it's gonna skyscraper be there for 50 over. years <laughs> yeah and there's gonna be a major disaster um 
And so basically the, the architect was like, yeah, you're, uh, we, we did the maths. It turns out you're absolutely right. So they bring in a, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would have fallen over and it wasn't, it was even, um, shit, it's in my notes. Uh, it doesn't matter. But it was like, it was more, it was less than 50 years. It was like every 16 years once they'd run the numbers and stuff. Damn. And so, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. It's right here. That counterweight needed power. Yeah. Okay. So the, however the counterweight works, I'm sorry. This the is so confusing. Was it? it needed to be, there needed to be power to it. So okay. it could like move to like counterweight the wind or whatever okay but they're like if that power fails in a storm that 50 year event gets turned into a 16 year event ah. so it's like okay that's gonna happen not great that's uh -huh. gonna happen pretty soon um so overnight they brought in a crew of people to weld all of these things like inside it to put some extra supports in mm. and they did it all in secret the workers in the office didn't find out really and wow. it was only revealed years later that they'd kind of done this to the general public. There was a documentary made about it. The undergrad student who phoned and said, this is what I think is going on. She only found out about it when she watched the documentary years no. later. Because they were like an unknown undergrad student. She was like, that was me. That was me. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Oh, like, that's, it's good, right? That's a, that's a good little... That's, wow. That's a little claim to flame, fame, isn't it? Like I, yeah. I saved a skyscraper from falling. That's, but you, fascinating how you can make such a an error. What? Even though, I mean, seventh rule of the building in the world at the time, these are leading architects. Yeah, I, I think it's engineers. probably down to that, that it's not something that they would have had to worry about because it never happened. Whereas like, if you if you look, for example, some of the best architectural buildings for skyscrapers are in Mexico City, for example, because they have so many earthquakes that they have to be really structurally sound. They have, they have all like um, sort of hydraulic uh, sort of re, um, recalibration systems. And I think I might be making this number up, but I think... Uh, that looking over, uh, sorry, uh, that the top of the buildings can move up to ten meters or possibly more. Um, this in the, with sway, with like yeah. earthquake sway, uh, so that they basically minimize the amount of times that uh, the earthquakes bring down. Did I tell you, I lived in Mexico City for six months. You didn't. Please tell me more. Uh, yeah, they have lots of tall buildings and they have earthquakes. That's all. Did that's you live that's... through any earthquakes? Oh uh, yeah. yeah, nothing major. But I mean, major for like my experience of earthquakes, it was like you're like whoa. What's going no, on? It was, it was the middle of the night. <laughs> it was the middle of the night and I'm just sleeping in bed. And then I wake up and all of like my book and stuff have, and my clock have fallen off onto the floor. And like, I remember hearing this like crazy rattling from like the, it, and it was the, uh, you know, you've got your curtain and there's a curtain rail. Yeah, and it's yeah. like <laughs> rattling around. And I wake up in the morning and be like, wow, it was quite an earthquake last night. And I was like, oh, that's where all my stuff's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like, that was it. That what, was it. What were you doing in Mexico City? Uh, my wife was studying there. Oh, wow. So okay. she spent six months studying. Or five, five months. Good tacos. Then. Dude, I ate so many tacos. It's, but you, the thing you is, you never get bored of tacos. No. Like, so you never Have get you, bored. You've been to Mexico City. I've been to Mexico. I've not been to Mexico City, but it's I. It's an I, interesting place. It's cool because the weather's nice. Like, it's higher up, so it's kind of like spring all the time. Oh, the nice. weather's pretty good. It's nice. not super hot. Um, but, oh, dude, so many tacos. But also, what I want to say about the earthquakes and skyscrapers is in the apartment that I rented, it, it had been so shaken by earthquakes over time that I started noticing, like, it, I, I was like, I swear this is on a like slight slope. Mm -hmm. And it was. Would've you been. could like yeah. get a bottle of water at one side of the apartment, let it go, and it would quickly roll to the other side. Really? I would notice like be sitting at my desk and like if my desk was like Pencil, this <laughs> way, you'd just be rolling back. If you weren't, you really, you re really would start to roll on your desk. It was that sloped. Jeez. And we're on like, the fourth floor of this building. Yeah. Did you go, we've got to find a new building? <laughs> <laughs> nah, we were like, oh, whatever. <laughs> At that point, we had no money. <laughs> I was I was young. It was cheap. Um, and then I also worked in a giant skyscraper because um, I, I worked for myself. I was doing like VO work and stuff okay, and, yeah. and what, what, just a bunch of freelance work from That's Upwork. That's a voiceover for those not in the business. Yes, not sorry. in the biz. Uh, yeah, you got to call it the biz. That the sounds biz. cool.